Okie doke, hacksters. We have compiled a list of our top projects from 2018, and this is mostly based on audience participation. Here are the top ones that caught people's interest in 2018, as well as a few extra little tidbits. First up, we have Friller, the Frill Explorer robot. It's a 3D printed compact robot that changes the radius of its wheels to overcome obstacles. This thing, uh, you can 3D print it yourself. So here you can see the Friller going from a tiny little robot with round wheels to these sort of like spiky nubby things that it can use to drive up onto and over this table. Check that out! It's even got a little balancy tail like, you know, a lizard would have. It's called a flat fish tail. And apparently the fish tail allows it to traverse desert or snow terrains. So it's basically an all-terrain vehicle. As long as there's terrain, you can get across it, you know. It's not necessarily gonna work very well on water, especially since it's made of electronics. <laughs> but they use the Touch OSC app to send signals to the robot for how it should move. And so this whole thing works with Android things on the Raspberry Pi. You can go download the custom parts of enclosures and of course the code all at the bottom of the project. Super cool. Another Android Things based project, the Android Things Handbot. And this one uses laser cutting of two different materials together to create a very flexible hand that you can control with gestures from your own hand. Uh, so first you have these sort of like thicker sort of standard acrylic pieces and then you have these nylon pieces and I think that's a really clever way of doing this. An interesting thing that they incorporate here is the use of heat set inserts, which are things that basically you use the, a soldering iron to provide heat to push these metal parts into your laser cut or 3D printed plastic so that you have a really stable anchor for any parts that you're connecting together. This is something that I've been learning about this year and it seems like a really useful technology. And if you're curious, there's an article about these heat set inserts on markforged.com. Looks like they have a lot of good info here. Next up, we have the six layer PCB motor from Carl who got tons of attention this year for his little teeny tiny PCB based motors. That's right, this is a motor. It's ridiculous. He's got these really great explainer videos and not only has he created these rigid ones but now uh, he's been talking about how he got these flexible ones created by Oshpark. It's allowing him to develop really tiny little robots. In fact, let's scroll up to see the more recent things he's been doing. And check this out, it's a little vibrating robot with 3D printed parts, very small, uh, and little magnets that interact with the induced electromagnets uh, in the little coils there that are caused by passing current through these wires that attach to them. Very cool. This is a personal fave. I really love animal robots. Uh, and since this one came in right at the end of the year, um, it almost didn't make the list. It's called Intellisaurus. It's a Triceratops robot in this picture, but there's actually three different versions that you can make. There's a Triceratops, there's a Stegosaurus, which used to be my favorite uh, dinosaur, <laughs> and it even has the Thagomizers on the end. <laughs> and there's also a dragon model that you can use to put around this shell. So this involves both laser cutting and 3D printing. If you're a new maker, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult for you. It also includes a ton of servos and stuff, but he's got a ton of info to go with it. You can drive it with this AI package that includes a Raspberry Pi Zero, an audio hat, and a speaker and a camera so that the little robot can actually see and speak and understand things, which is like, whoa. But even without that, this little robot can walk on its own. Adam Taylor is a recurring star on our media channels. He sometimes writes blogs for us, especially about FPGAs, and this is no different. He is using an FPGA to do sonar measurement uh, for a hexapod robot that is still in production. So this was published back in August and he walks you through the build in Vivado, the FPGA software. Tons of useful information here, not only about the build, but also about the testing process that he went through. Because if you're building a sonar rig, obviously you want to make sure that it actually works, otherwise your robot's gonna crash into stuff and you're gonna be very sad about your hexapod. So, he's included photos of that whole process, and you can find the files on GitHub. We've talked a lot about OpenCat recently because of its descendant, 
Nibble, which is a kit that got crowdfunded on Indiegogo. And in fact, as I record this, my colleagues are over in the next room assembling Nibble. So I'm really excited that we finally have this little cat project that we can build. It's a robot that helps you learn electronics. And that's exactly the point. Rongjong, the creator, wanted to create something that allows you to learn to program robots. In his words, software developers can write AI enhanced applications on a pet like robot rather than a wheeled iPad. And I totally get that sentiment. So cute. Here it is going up a set of steps with its uh, actual feline equivalent and human companion. One of the neat things about this project is that not only is it a cat robot, but also its maker, Rongjong, incorporates elements of art as well. So, for example, he says, I bought my first Raspi in June 2016 to learn coding hardware to express my joy when I first lit up an LED with a spark from Pi. I wrote a Chinese quatrain, a really beautiful little poem, and I'll confess that I kind of get how the feel of the poem relates to feeling this new capability and power in your hands, but I imagine it's so much better uh, if you read it in its native language. Plus, uh, in the Nibble project, he mentions that he designed these wooden laser cut parts to fit together largely without screws based on a uh, mortise and tenon design from Chinese architecture. And finally, I have to talk about Archimedes. This is my familiar robot owl I built for Maker Faire this year and they threw it in the list so I'm throwing it in the list <laughs> which to be honest I think is slightly awkward but uh anyway <laughs> if you don't know my blue robot owl that runs on Google's AI Y vision kit then you might be interested in checking it out it has a camera in the left eye a piezo buzzer in the right eye an arcade button on top and its little top hat uh, and a couple of servos that allow him to sort of move around and stuff. Since then, actually, I've gotten connected with a bunch of really cool makers who are building their own robotic sidekicks. And I think that's the coolest thing to come out of this year for me, uh, is just that ability to connect with other people who have kind of the same drive and the same interests robotically. Plus, I like the idea of taking wearable tech beyond uh, just LEDs. So there's plenty of cool stuff you can do with LEDs. Anyone can wear a robot owl. Doesn't even matter what season it is. So feel free to grab the files and you can mix and match however you like. You can of course find the links to all of these projects in the description underneath this video. Stay tuned, we've got a few more top 2018 posts for you as well as a review of the top tools from last year. Most of which were featured in Hackspace magazine back in November.